Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern County Water Agency, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and Bakersfield City School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. I'm Chuck. And I'm Mary Lou. And let's go to Marty in the Tudor studio. Thanks, Mary Lou. If you guys are calling in to get some help on Do The Math, you can call us here at 636-4357. If you're in the San Luis Obispo area, you can call us toll free at 1-866-636-6284. You can also email us your problems. You can send us a picture of it and email it at dothemath at kern.org. You can also watch us online. If you can't see us on cable, you can watch us live online at dothemathonline.net. And look for us on social media with Facebook Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Back to you, Mike. All right, thank you very much for that. We do have a lot going on today. As a matter of fact, we have a full studio. All I right. dare say that we've got probably a dozen people in here today, where usually it's about four. So it's nice to have everybody in here today. We have a lot of special guests. We have uh, also a reminder. Every time you phone in to do the math and we do one of your math problems on TV, your name is automatically entered into a drawing. And that drawing every single day is for a family four-pack to go see the Bakersfield Condors. And they open up the season this weekend. So I know that we uh, gave away a four-pack yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that student is going to try to go out this weekend for opening weekend. They've always got a lot of great promotions. We certainly are thankful to the Condors for the many years of support that yes, they've helped us out here with Do the Math. Anyway, before we get to all of that, let's first take a look at today's Math in the News. All right. In October, it's a rather exciting time for sports fans. Yeah. Yes. Because you've got a lot of sports going on. Some are starting, some are ending, which makes it more interesting with the playoffs and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, but sadly, baseball season is now officially over. The Yankees <laughs> were knocked out last night, so there's no reason to watch any more baseball except to see where draft picks come in order and things like that. Anyway, you still guys uh, still have a, a team in the, in the running still? Well, no and yes, so I have to change allegiance, and I'll root for Kansas City now. Well, because your San Francisco because team is only on every other year, yeah, that's right? right? So. so this is their off year. That's Mary Lou, any team in this thing? No. All right, so you're good with officially baseball being over as yes. well. Yes. We're just going to make you a Yankee fan right now. When you think of baseball, what are some of the things that come to mind? Um, well, the ballpark and the food. Yeah. The ballpark, candy, the popcorn. food, all that kind of stuff, right? When yes. you go to a baseball game, most people automatically are going to have a what? Dodger hot dog. Right? Dodger hot dog, dog if they're in Dodger Stadium, yeah. right? But a hot dog of some sort. Do and they have they've Yankee got dogs? Old, they have <laughs> not Yankee dogs. These are... <laughs> I guess you could call it dominant dogs, but not, no, not dominant this year by any means. They uh, got a lot of old men on that team. Anyway, everybody likes to have a dog when they go to the ballpark. Yes. So I figured let's take a look at some of the things about hot dogs and hot dog buns. Uh -huh. All right. So you know that when you pick up a bag of uh, buns, usually it might come in a pack of eight. Yes. yes. However, when you pick up a pack of hot dogs, it might come, this is one half of, let's say it comes in ten. Yeah. So you've got 10 hot dogs, but you've only got eight buns. Exactly. Or it works the other way around, mm -hmm. where you've got some odd number. And it never seems to match up no. with the brand of hot dog you want and the brand of hot dog bun that you want. Sounds like a conspiracy. Yep. I don't know. My dogs get pretty happy because those two left over go to them. Well, I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and take a look at this and apply some math to it. Okay. So I take a look at common multiples. <laughs> All right. See, a common this, multiple. This is it. Yeah, there is you it. go. 
A common multiple of two numbers is a multiple shared by the numbers. List the multiples of 2 and 3 that are less than 25. So if we have 2, we can go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, all the way up through right. 24. 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, all the way up through 24. The common ones are listed in red. So we know the common multiples of 2 and 3 that are less than 25 are 6, 12, 18, and 24. So it would be nice if hot dogs and hot dog buns came in packages of 6, 12, 18, 24, or something else, but it would be nice if it was uniform yes. right. across the industry. So one more, that a lot of students, I mean, because usually when they're in fourth grade, they're being introduced to multiples, least common multiple, and things like that. Um, so let's take a look at least common multiple, because we saw all the multiples of two and right. three, and you go on forever. However, the least common multiple, the LCM, is the smallest of all the common multiples of the two numbers. So if we want to find the LCM of 8 and 10, well, we take 8, we count by 8s, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. So the least common multiple of 8 and 10 is 40. So it's the first number you come to that is common for both 8 and 10. So mm -hmm. that is a little bit on multiples and least common multiple. Uh, I think almost every single student in elementary school will be using multiples and least common multiples at least by fifth grade. Hopefully. Mm, right. And you're hoping that they are yes. definitely <laughs> mastering this by the time yes. they get to uh, junior high and definitely when they get to high school. Yes. But we do have everything available for them if they need a little bit of help with that. As a matter of fact, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30, most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. 636-4357 is that phone number right now. We'll go to the phones. From Buena Vista, April, how are you today? Hello, April. Hi. You're a sixth grade student, correct? Yes. All right, I remember you have phoned into the program before. As soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Okay, negative 12. Okay, negative 12. Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, negative 12. Parentheses. Okay. 5x. 5x. Parentheses. Okay. Plus 3. Plus 3. Parentheses. Okay. Negative 7x. Negative 7x. Parentheses. Okay. And negative x. And negative x on the end. All right. Let's make sure we have this right. We have negative 12 open parentheses, 5x, close parentheses, plus 3, open parentheses, negative 7x, close parentheses, minus x. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So we, it looks like we need to do some multiplying first, don't we? Yes. And we're going to use our order of operation. That's why we're going to do some multiplying. And remember, multiplying is just repeated addition. So when I look at this, I know that I'm really saying um, that we're going to do um, five groups or negative 12 groups of 5x, right? Yes. So we're really saying negative 12 times this 5 times an unknown number there. So what is negative 12 times 5? It's negative 6. Negative 60. Mm. Yeah, there you go. And then that x comes along with it because that's that unknown number that we really don't know what it is yet, but we're gonna, you know, we'll just keep moving along. Yeah. Now let's go over to this right here. Again, a number next to parentheses, we know it means multiplication, and this is saying, hey, I have three groups of negative seven x. So again, we want to multiply those two together. So what is three times negative seven? It is negative 21. Negative 21, and again, that x is attached because we don't know what it is yet, right? Yeah. And then we're going to bring down this plus sign. So we're going to bring that plus sign straight down. Over here, we have a minus x, and that is actually what we call the identity property. That's why I put a 1 there, because mm -hmm. 1 times anything equals itself. So we're going to bring down that negative 1x. Now, do we really need this plus minus here, this double operation? No. We really don't need it because it's a negative sign, and that negative sign really means what operation? 
It means subtraction. It means subtraction. So we really don't need this. So we're just going to take away that plus sign. We're just going to leave a minus there, and let's put our 21 back there, okay? okay? Now what we're left with is combining like terms. And we're combining the like terms because we're simplifying this. We're making the problem simpler. And we know whatever x is, it's all going to be the same. So in parentheses, I'm just going to throw in just these numbers, okay? And right. I'm going to throw my variable outside. Because okay. whatever the, this, the numbers come to, we know we're going to times it by x, because x is in each one of them, all right? Okay. So there's a negative, there's a negative, and there's another negative. Are we kind of just grouping all these negatives together? Um, yeah. Yeah, we are, because we're actually, what we're doing, we're saying, okay, we're going to start at negative 60, we're going to take away 21, and we're going to take away 1. And so we're just going to keep working to the left of the number line. So what is 60 plus 21? 60 plus 21 is a 81. 81. And what is 81 plus 1? 82. 82. So this all comes down to 82, meaning we have negative 82. So when we keep moving on that number line, we're all the way over there. And again, it's saying times the x, so we're going to bring the x down. Now let's look at one more time. So we had the negative 12 times the 5x, yeah. giving us negative 60x. Then we had 3 times negative 7x, giving us negative 21x. And then we bring down our one negative x. We group all those wonderful like terms together, and we come up with our negative 82x. And there you go. Nicely done, April. Fabulous problem right there. Are you still online with us? Yes. All right. Well, you know what? For having such a great problem, we're going to send you away with a meal courtesy of our friends at Johnny Rockets in the Marketplace. So congratulations on that. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Don't forget, if you're calling in outlying areas of Kern County as well as San Luis Obispo, that phone number is toll free at 1-866-636-6284. If you're a fan of ice cream, Doc Bernstein's Ice Cream <laughs> Lab over on the Central Coast. If you're calling from San Luis Obispo County, you phone in, we do your problem, you're going to Doc's absolutely free. Don't even have to enter a drawing. Mm -hmm. 25 kids could call right now all at once. All 25 of you are going to Doc's. And we'd be <laughs> happy to see each and every one of you. Don't forget, do the math online.net. You may have some friends that have viewed the program in the past, possibly on uh, Bright House uh, cable, and no longer have cable for whatever reason. Always go to the website, dothemathonline.net, and then uh, periodically throughout the program, all of the different social media that we're on, there's mm -hmm. a tons, tons of ways to get a hold of us and see what's going on. As a matter of fact, what's going on is our first special guest of the afternoon. Makai, how are you? Hi, very well, Mike. Thank you. Nice to have you in the afternoon. Uh, you work at America's Tire. Yes. What is your role there? Um, I'm the store manager, so um, I pretty much do everything. So you're the boss. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So as store manager, what are some of the things, the responsibilities <clears throat> that you are responsible for? Um, just uh, making sure employees follow the correct processes, making sure the scheduling's done, the inventory is correct, um, stuff like that, making sure that everything's right. Our so if I, if I bring my vehicle in and you guys have a lot of free services, like you'll check air pressure and things like that, uh, fix flats, things yes. like that. Uh -huh. uh, but if I go in and I go, hey, you know, I need some new tires for my vehicle and you go, oh, let's take a look. and you don't have them. Is that on you? It can be. <laughs> I, know, I'm like, yeah, I know you can't have all the tires for all the vehicles available all the time. That would be difficult. It would be. Uh, how long have you been with America's Tire? Uh, 17 years now. 17 years? Yes, sir. And always in Bakersfield, or have you traveled around a bit? Been or? all over the place in the Southern California area. Okay. Yeah. How many different stores are there? Well, this company has over 900 stores nationwide. There's about 180 stores in California. Wow. So you have opportunity to travel if you want. If I want. Okay. But you like it here in Bakersfield. I do like it here. And we like having you here in Bakersfield. <laughs> what are some of the things that uh, students, because a lot of the students that are viewing the program right now are not old enough to drive. And some are. Some things that uh, students need to be aware of, just some general knowledge about tires. You know, like, all right, well, what do I need to know? A uh, big thing is tire age. You want to make sure your tires aren't old. 
Um, and there's some numbers on the side that you can look at and find, or you could bring it to a, us and we can look at it and we can tell you. Um, another thing is you want to make sure the tires are, uh, they have enough tread that it's deep enough so the tires will grip the road properly and stuff like that. Okay. Now, I know there are going to be some students out there that are race fans, and they go, all right, well, you need <laughs> tread, you need it deep enough to grip the road. But there are race cars that have no tread. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? or? Race car tires, they're a completely different animal. They're made out of uh, different rubber compounds that are softer and grip the track better. They're designed to be on the track. And the grooves in the tread are designed just to dis dis distribute water. So on a dry racetrack, there's no there water to no. worry about. So just the maximum contact, you get all that rubber on the ground, gives you better traction. Okay. And what are some of the things that you guys use where you're applying math at America's Tire? Uh, a lot of it is, you know, tire sizing. Um, some other stuff is uh, torque values, so make sure the lug nuts are on the vehicle properly. Stuff like that, uh, vehicle related. Okay, you know. and if somebody was interested in maybe working at America's Tire while they're in high school or something like that, or once they get out, you guys train them on all of these things, correct? Yes, yeah, all, all of our training is done in-house. Okay, so you'll let them know exactly what they need to know in order to be efficient yes. and knowledgeable <laughs> at America's Tire. All right, you know what, we're going to have you do a couple of math problems. <laughs> we'll see if we have time, but I'm going to give you some good ones. Okay. All right. Sounds good. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Right now, from American Elementary, Malaya, how are you today? Hello, Malaya. Hi. And are you working on rounding decimals to whole numbers? Is that correct? All right, let's hear the numbers that you're working with, and I believe Chuck is all ready to help you out. Okay. Hi. So I am working on 0 0.7 round to the nearest full number, 1.4 round to the nearest full number, 3.9 round to the nearest full number, 2.2 round to the nearest full number, and 1.8 round to the nearest full number. Okay, let me make sure I got these right. I, I heard 0 0.7. 0 0.7. 1.4. 1. 1. Yes. 3.9. Yes. 2.2 and 1.8. Yes. yes. And you want us to round these to the nearest whole number, correct? Yes, All correct. Right. So what we have to do is we have to find the whole number place, right? So we mm -hmm. know in the decimal that that decimal point separates the whole numbers on one side from the yeah. fractions on the other side, right? So uh -huh. we know that this number directly to the left of the decimal point that's our whole number place, isn't it? So we're going to round to the nearest whole number, and there's our whole numbers in each one of these. Here, zero is our whole number. Here, one is. Here, three, two, and one. All right. Yes. So now, how do we round off? We want to see how close we are, right? So what are we going to do? Yes. So what would we do in this first one? If we have a z 0 0.7, what are we going to do with this number, and, and how are we going to tell whether we round? Well, we're either going to round up, correct? Yes. Or we're going to round down, correct? Yes. Okay, so how do we determine if we round up or down? You're going to You're going to round up. So this is a 7. How do, how do we know that this tells us to round up? What, what does this number have to be to round up? The number uh, So I'm going to I'm going to come here and I'm going to I'm going to separate my whole number from my decimal, right? And so let's look at this number, right? Yes. If this number is more than halfway, right? We're between think about the number line, right? We're at 0 and we're at one and 0.7 is somewhere in between, right? Yes. Right directly in the middle is 0.5, isn't it? Yes. So anything on this side, right, closer to one is going to round up to one. Anything on this side is going to be closer to zero and we're going to round down to zero. So we oh. have to compare this number seven to that number right in the middle, don't we? So where is point seven? Is it to the right or to the left? It is to the right. So point seven is right here maybe, right? A little bit closer to one than point five. So since it's to yes. the right, it's bigger than five, isn't it? 
Since yeah. this number is bigger than five, it's closer to one. And so what we're gonna do is come over here and we're gonna change that to a one. And since we're working with the whole number, we don't need the decimal or any numbers over here, do we? So yeah, we know correct. that this number is closer to one than it is to zero because that's a 0.7, all right? Yeah. So now we'll yeah. do the same thing with that 1.4. Since we're still, we're working here, now I'm not gonna draw a number line for each one of these, but let's look at this yeah. one. I'm at one and I'm at two, right? So I know that 1.4 is somewhere between one and two. Exactly yeah. halfway is 0.5. Where's that 0.4? Is it to the right or to the left? It is to the left. It's a little bit smaller than 0 0.5, isn't it? Yes. So there's my 1.4, right? So yes. I know that 1.4 is closer to 1 than it is to 2. So I looked at this number, and since it was less than 5, we're actually going to get rid of that number and make that 1 bigger, aren't we? Uh, excuse me, yes. we're going to make it, we're gonna make it 1. We're not going to make it bigger, but we're not going to we're not gonna subtract, right? We're gonna keep it at one and drop to four, right? So this yeah. one's closer to one because it's to the left. This one's closer to one because it's, excuse me, to the right, and this one's to the left. Mm -hmm. And so we drop the decimal point and keep our whole number, okay? So mm -hmm. let's try this one. Now, can we do this without the number line? We can, um, can't we? Yeah. So if I'm gonna do my whole number, I'm gonna look at that nine. Now I can still think of the number line, but is that nine to the right or to the left of 0.5? It is to the left. It's bigger than 0.5, isn't it? So it's to the, it's to the, it's to the right, right? Because it's bigger, so it's gonna be to the right since it's bigger than five. So that means it's closer to four than it is to three. And I drop the decimal and I get my number four, right? Yes. Okay, so all of our answers are going to be whole numbers, no decimals. So again, I look at this one. I'm going yes. to look at that. Two, is it bigger than five? Is it to the right? Or is it less than five? Is it to the left? Huh? Less than five, isn't it? Yes. So if it's less than five, I know I'm going to be closer to two, because it's between two and three, and I drop my decimal. Okay, and finally, what's the last one? I'm going to look at that next number. I'm between 1 and 2, so I can go back to my number line here. Am I to yeah. the right of 0.5 or to the left? It's bigger, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. bigger, so it's going to be to the right. Yeah. It's going to go closer to 2, so I'm going to drop this and make that a 2. All right? Yeah. So there we go. All Thanks right. Nicole. Nicely done. Great problem right there, rounding numbers is a third grader right there so yes. probably first time rounding with things like that we do have phone tutors available until 5 30. now makai some of the things that students need to know and adults also uh psi what does yes. psi stand for and why is that important uh psi is the pounds per square inch that's the air pressure inside of the tire um, you need to have the correct amount of air pressure in the tire to carry the weight of the vehicle also for the vehicle to handle the way the manufacturer intended and um to ride nice or you know, whatever you're looking for as far as the ride quality and stuff like okay. that. Okay. Now, one of the problems I, because when we said, hey, can you come on the show and stuff like that, and you're like, what are we going to talk about? And I go, well, I've got a math problem for you. And uh, how to calculate the rolling circumference of a tire. Mm -hmm. How do you figure that out? Okay, well, first you need to know the size of the tire. That's the most important part. Well, there are so, numbers on the side of a yes. tire. So explain a little bit about the numbers on the side of the tire. Okay, well, there's a lot of different numbers on the side of the tire. One of them, uh, one of, there's a three section number that indicates the size. Uh, so after you find the size of the tire, it usually starts with a P or an LT, and then it'll be three numbers and a slash, and then two numbers, and then an R, and then the last number will be your wheel diameter, your, radio, uh, your, your rim diameter. Uh, so that, that's gonna be another two digit number. So once you find those, and, and the first number is the width of the tire in millimeters, I express it in millimeters. Okay. The second number is called an aspect ratio. It's the percentage of the width but it's from the top of the wheel to the top of the tire, it's the height of the, tire, the, of the sidewall. And then the R, usually uh, tires are radial constructed anymore, so that's gonna be stands for radial. And then the wheel diameter, 15, 18, whatever that happens to be. And it's all done in metric? Pretty much, yes. Okay, so 
we know what the numbers kind of are referring to mm -hmm. on the side now. Yes. So now, once again, to calculate the rolling circumference, how would you go about that? Okay. First, you take the width of the tire, and you want to convert that width to inches. And there are 25.4 millimeters in an inch. So you take the number, the width of the tire, say it's 205, divide that by 25.4 to get your inches. The next thing you want to do is you multiply that number by the aspect ratio, okay. which is a percentage. So 0.4 or 40 percent or whatever, whatever that happens, whatever that aspect ratio happens to be. Then you'll multiply that by two because you have the top and the bottom. And then you add in your wheel diameter, and that gives you the overall diameter of the tire of the whole assembly. And then you just multiply that by pi. All right. Now, as long as you've got that formula that you know you just work with that algorithm, you can figure all of these things out. Yes. The key is making sure that you know that first. Yes. So a lot of people might think, well, you know, there's not a lot of math involved with these guys. Like, hey, I need some tires. That what size you need? Ah, it looks about that. Let's go ahead and do this. There's a lot more into it. There, there is. There's more to it than that. Yes. All right. Well, you know what? You have a couple of minutes. Yeah. All right. We're gonna have you stick around for just okay. a couple of moments. Uh, another student from American Elementary, Tara. How are you today? Is it Tara or Tara? Tara. Tara. What grade are you in? Fourth. All right. As soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Okay. 15 divided by 2,145. Okay. Tara, is the 16 on the outside of the house or is there a division symbol? It's on the outside. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're actually saying... Oh, so we have 16 here, and inside the house, what was the number one more time? 15 outside. Okay, and the number inside the house? 2,145. 2,145. Okay, so we're actually not saying 16 divided by this. We're actually saying 2,145 divided by 16. So the number inside is called our dividend because that's our first number and we're dividing it by the divisor which is our second number. So obviously we're going to start off, we can't say 2 divided by 16, can we? No. No, so I'm just going to put a X there. We don't need that. So let's go to the next number, 21. Let's, can we say 21 divided by 16? No. Well, yeah. How many times does 16 go into 21? Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, it goes how many complete times? Uh, what about uh, one time? Does five? it does it go one complete time? Um, yeah. Yeah, so we have one times 16, which is 16, and then we're going to subtract. So help me subtract here. We can't say um, 1 minus 16, so we got to do some borrowing, don't we? Yeah. Okay, so what's 11 minus 6? Um... Uh, five. Five. You got it. And then we know that one minus one is zero. So we're going to leave that there, okay? Okay. Uh, and then we're now going to bring down the four, right? Yep. Let's bring down that four. And then I'm going to bring the 16 down here because now we're saying 54 divided by 16, okay? Okay. So let's think about this. How many 16s go into 54? Well, let's kind of use estimation, okay? I'm going to kind of estimate this at 2. Oh, I just dis dis disappeared on me, didn't it? I'm going to estimate this at 20, so 2. 2 goes into 5 about how many times? Uh, it can't. 2 goes into 5, I mean, about 2 times, right? Oh, yeah. So let's do some estimation off to the side. Let's start with a 3. I know it goes about 2 times. Let's try 3. So 6 times 3 is 18. Yes. And then 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 48. Four. Is 48 pretty close to 54? Yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead with the 3. Okay. And let's okay. bring our 48 over here. And again, Tara, we got to do our subtraction, so help me out. We can't say 4 minus 8, so let's do our borrowing, okay? So 14 minus 8 is? Um, uh, 6. 6, you got it. And then we have 4 minus 4, which is 0, right? Yeah. And now we got to bring down the 5. 5, right? So let's bring down our 5. 
And then again, we're dividing this one more time by 16. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just bringing it down like that kind of helps me remember, hey, I'm dividing that by that number. So we know that 16 times 3 is 48. Mm -hmm. Should we kind of play with um, 16 times 4 to see if that's close to 65? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So let's try that. So let's times it by 4. So 6 times 4 is 24. Carry your mm -hmm. 2. And we know 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is a 6. Did we get six. pretty close? Yeah. We did, didn't we? So now we know there's a 4 here. And let's, and does your teacher want remainders? Um, we just need the answer. Okay. Well, if we subtract this, 65 minus 64 is 1. And we're actually left with a remainder of 1. So we know that 2,145 divided by 16 is approximately 134 with a remainder of 1. Yeah. Okay? Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Thank you for calling. There you go. Nicely done. A nice problem right there. I was going to say, how long does she want to go? Because decimal, we're going to have four numbers after yes. that decimal place, and we just wanted to see if she needed to do that or the remainder yeah. right there. <laughs> Mackay, yes. certainly, once again, a uh, pleasure having you in. Thank you. Any uh, last words for anybody uh, as far as tires go? Uh, if you need tires, come see us. There you go. Easy <laughs> enough right there. You know I, mean? so, I was going to give you another math problem, but I know that we're up against the time right now, so I'll okay. uh, let you off the hook on that one. But if you come back again, we're going to get even more difficult problems for you. Good sure. with that? All right. Hey, you know what? We'll have some more phone calls. But first, we return now to the Henry C. Garnett Water Purification Plant in Bakersfield for part four of our special six-part series, Do the Science series on water. Today, manager David Beard introduces us to plant operator Derek Guffey. But first, we go underground to check out a place they call the Pipe Gallery. Dave, there is a lot of amazing things going on at the purification plant, and this is one of the spots because as people drive by, they can see a lot of the things that are going on, have a lot of questions about it, but we're subterranean now, and this is a spot where a lot of people are not able to visit, so thank you for bringing us down into no the basement. Problem. But anyway, I know that we've got some backwash pipes going on and some other yeah. things. What is going on down here? We're actually in one of our treatment trains, what we refer to as the pipe gallery, so we're actually below the filters and sedimentation basins and what this is is really one of the last stops of the water while it's in our purification plant. So by the time the water comes down out of the filters, there's been filtered. From these pipes, it's delivered in for storage into one of our clear wells. We have 12 filters here. Over time, those filters may need to be refreshed and so we are actually able to backwash those filters. We have the different color of pipe here. The pipe with the blue contain the water that has been filtered and will be delivered for drinking water. And then when the filters need to be backwashed, that water will be delivered through these lighter green pipes here. So I see you're analyzing something over here. What exactly is going on in this system? These are turbidimeters and these analyze the clarity of the water. And these readouts here are the same readouts that an operator will see when they're in the control room operating the SCADA system. We are required to have an operator present 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. In other words, we never close. So no they, Christmas off, <laughs> no Thanksgiving, yeah. someone, no New someone Year's. Someone does get to work during the holidays. Um, but so the operator we have today, his name is Derek Guffey, and he is here in charge of the plant. Now, Derek, I'm curious, what actually got you into your career in the water industry? Believe it or not, uh, I fa actually found an uh, advertisement in the newspaper for a water job, which actually started me off across the street at the Cross Valley Canal. And uh, five years there, after that, I moved over to here, and I've been here for four years. And what do you find most interesting about this whole filtration process? 
The job itself is very interesting, but apart from the job on the outside, the thing I find most interesting is really uh, serving our community because the operators that operate plants like this, they have to have the dedication, the knowledge, and the diligence to provide the best quality product that we can. That kind of responsibility I find interesting and very rewarding. Well, you do have a big responsibility because you're in the control room. Correct. Everything is remotely controlled. We can do everything from this station you see right here, where you're seeing on the screen is almost accurate almost all the time. But whenever we see something, we always back it up by a bench test over there at our testing station or physically go out to the device that might be showing an alarm and see if uh, it's actually happening. Well, Derek, I know you have a lot of responsibility up here, and Olivia, we're gonna put some of that on you right now if you're ready. All right. You wanna take Derek over here and we'll do a little bench test? Sure, All right. absolutely. Well, this is our bench testing area where we do all different kinds of testing on the water um, that comes into the plant and leaves the plant. So right here we have a TOC machine, which is a total organic carbon. Here we test things like hardness, chlorides that could be in the water. This would be our pH testing unit. and our bleach or chlorine testing. And the last one which we're gonna show you guys is turbidity. Tested in NTUs, which are nephilometric turbidity units. That's a big word, but basically all it is is the clarity of the water. So how clear is the water? Is it really cloudy or is it really easy to see through? And basically what the machine does is it shines a light through the sample and gives you a numerical readout of exactly how clear the water is. So we'll do a test on our raw water, which is our incoming water and then we'll do a test on our outgoing water. So anyway, so we'll take our little vial out here and we'll dump the old sample out. We'll take a sample of our raw water. We gotta make sure it's clean so we don't have any errant uh, results. And then we'll just pop it in there. We wait for the readout, so it's shining the light through it right now, and basically we have a number of 0.73. Okay, so if you remember that number, it's uh, two tenths under a whole one, all right? So we'll take it out now and we'll dump that out. We'll give it three rinses. Let it clean again. So what you're seeing is the beginning and the end, and, and in the middle here what you have is is samples from the entire process until the end. So sedimentation, filtration, through our clear wells, which basically store the water before we send it out through our distribution system. And then this is the end at the distribution system. And as it goes through the system, the water should get more and more clean until it ends up at the final. So as you can see, it's going down. So we started at 0 0.73, 0 0.74, 0 0.75. And now we're down to, uh, should stabilize at about a 0.08 right now. So that's just one of the tests we do to make sure that the water that we're sending out to the customers is clean, safe, pure. All right, so what does this machine do? So this instrument is an instrument we use to measure metals. And as I, I said, it has about four different methods of doing so. And welcome back to Remember, we have phone tutors available until 5.30. And some of the audio, if you're watching us on cable, there's a little bit of difficulty with the audio kind of going in and out, maybe not as clear as it should be. Uh, but you can always go to dothemathonline.net. No problem with the audio on the internet right there. So if you are experiencing a little bit of audio, you're like, 
I can't hear them or they're coming <laughs> in and out a little bit of things like that. Uh, that's through the cable company and you can always go online at dothemathonline.net. In studio with us right now, our next special guest, Michael, how are you today? Good. Why don't you let everybody know where you go to school and what grade you're in? I'm in Castle Elementary and I'm in fifth grade. So you're fifth grade at Castle Elementary. How's fifth grade going? Good. Pretty good so far? Yes. Nothing too hard? No. No? What's the hardest thing about fifth grade? I don't know. You don't know? It's been pretty good so far? Yes. All right. Do you know why you're here? Um, because... Uh, I don't know. Well, I invited you one day, right? Yeah. Because you called in, right? You called in a couple of weeks ago, right? Get up here so everybody can see your handsome face here. Now, you called in a couple of weeks ago, and you had a math problem, and you won a fair ticket when you called in. Yeah. And I figured, you know what? Let's just bring it to the school. And I came to your school. I went in, and I crashed your teacher's classroom, and all the kids were like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? I said, Michael called do the math, and he won himself a Kern County Fair ticket. And it was pretty simple to win, wasn't it? Yes. All you had to do was call in, and that was it. So then I said, hey, how about you come on the program one day? And here you are. You ready to do some math now? Yes. All right, excellent. That's what I wanted to hear. Head on over to the board with Mary Lou. You guys in fifth grade are working with fractions. In your book right here, it says, uh, go ahead, find the sum, write your answers in simplest form. And the next one you're working on is one-third plus one-fourth. All right, okay, so you already have it written out, right? Yes. But fractions aren't a whole number, are they? No. No, they're actually part of a number. So let's think of these, first of all, as a picture, okay? So if I have kind of a pie broken into three pieces, if we have one-third of that, then we're gonna shade in one-third of that. Yes. And then we have one-fourth, right? So we're going to make another circle equal, and we're going to break this into um, four fourth. pieces. And how much of it is shaded? Um, one. Why don't you shade one part for me there, okay? There you go. All right, let's get it all in there. Okay, so we need to add these up, and it's kind of difficult because this is broken into different pieces than this, right? They're not equal pieces, are they? We need to make sure that they're equal pieces. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a number, a common multiple, that both 3 and 4 both go into, right? Mm -hmm. We know that 3 doesn't go into 4, does it? No. No. So we need to start writing multiples of those numbers. So let's start with 3. 3 times 1 is obviously what? Um, 3 times 3. 3. What's 3 times 2? Um, 6. Okay. What's three times three? Nine. Oh, you know your stuff. What's three times four? Um, twelve. Okay, the last one was three times five. Three times five is fifteen. Okay, now let's start with fours. Four times one is? Four. Is four. Um, doesn't go in, does it? Four times two is? Eight. Uh, do we see any eights up here? No. No, no, we gotta keep going. Four times three is? is um, twelve. <gasps> Wait a minute. Do we see a 12 up there? Yes. Yeah, we do. So guess what? Our common multiple that both 3 and 4 both go into are? Um, are 12. 12. So that means I actually can kind of break these circles into 12 pieces each and figure it out, huh? Yes. But that's a lot of pieces, huh? Yes. Yeah? So let's make what's called equivalent fractions. We know that they both go into? 12. 12. So we can erase that, right? Yes. We know they both go into 12. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite our denominator as 12. 12. Now, I'm not going to just put the 1 over there, am I? No. No, because it has to be equivalent. They have to be equal. Yes. All right? So we need to think 3 times what number is 12? 4. Okay, so I'm going to put a little times 4 there. And if I'm timesing that by 4, equivalent means equal, so I have to do the exact same thing here, mm -hmm. okay? So what's 1 times 4? Four? 4. Okay, put it up there for me. Um, now, what are, you gonna, what are we going to do here? How are we going to change this? Um, 4 times 3 equals 12. Okay, put your times 3 there. And, and we do the same to the top. Awesome. And 1 times 3 equals 3. You got it. So now are we ready to add it? Um, 
Yes. Yes, we are. Am I going to add my denominators? No. No. What are we going to do to those denominators? They're, um, we're going to keep them the same. Okay, put that answer in there. And what happens with the numerators? Um, you add the numerators. There you go. Four and seven. And is that it? Yes. We can't simplify that, can we? No. And there you have it. Great there you job. Go. Nicely done with that Good first job. problem. Michael, you're well on your way to becoming a math tutor here on Do the Math. Come on back over here. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Right now, we'll go back to the phones. A student from Stockdale Elementary, Ashley, how are you today? I am good, thank you. And what grade are you in, Ashley? Sixth grade. All right, as soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Okay, it's three high, uh, open parentheses, 2x, plus 4, close parentheses, okay. plus 6, open parentheses, Negative 5k. Well, I'm 5k. Oh, so not x, but now we're changing to k? Yes. Okay, just, just making sure. Negative 8. Minus 8. Close parentheses, and is that it? Yes. All right. So the instructions are to simplify this, right? Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify it. And the first thing we do to simplify it is do what? Oh, I'm sorry. The 2x is actually a 2k. So this is a k. Okay. So that, that was my question. If we had the same variable, so it's 2k plus 4 and minus 5, negative 5k minus 8. Okay. okay so we have yeah, the and same. Then 5k close parentheses minus open parentheses negative 8 close parentheses. Okay. So let me make sure we have this down here. So you said it's. Mm, it's minus 5k, and then we close parentheses here? Yes. And then minus 8? No, and then minus, open parentheses, negative 8, close. Oh, okay. Right. Makes so it more like interesting. Yes, yeah. yeah, it makes much So now we've got three sets of parentheses. Let's get rid of the parentheses first, right? Because we want to yeah. simplify and combine terms. So let's get rid of these parentheses. What do we get? 3 times 2k, what is that? 6k and 3 times 4? 12. 12. Alright, now, we don't have any adding or subtracting, we just have a negative 5k, so we're just going to do one multiplication here, aren't we? What's 6 yes. times negative 5k? Negative 30k. So I could write this as plus a negative 30k, couldn't I? Because I have a yes. plus here and a minus 30, negative 30k. And now, what do I have here? I have a, a minus a negative 8. So what happens when you subtract a negative 8? Um, you so one way I could think of it is, let's think of it as multiplication. There's no number out in front, so it's understood to be a 1 here, isn't it? Oh, yes. So this is a negative 1 times a negative 8. And what's negative 1 times negative 8? Negative 8. Let's see, negative times negative is? Positive. Positive 8, isn't it? Yes. Alright, so now what we're going to do is combine like terms, right? We've got yes. our k terms and we've got our number terms, so let's combine those. And in your book, sometimes they'll actually rewrite these, so they'll put the two k terms together and the two number terms together. Have you done that? Uh, yes. Okay, so we could write this as 6k plus negative 30k and then let's put the plus 12 plus 8. So what is 6k plus negative 30k? Um, 36, negative 36. Well, let's see, this is a positive 6 and a negative 30. So if you remember on the number line, they're going to go in opposite directions, aren't they? Yes. So if I have a positive 6 and a negative 30, I have to subtract these two numbers, don't I? Yes. What do I get when I subtract 30 and 6? You get 24. 24. Now, is it more positive or more negative? Um, more... Negative 30. My 30 is bigger than 6. So it's a much more negative number, isn't it? Yes. So 6 plus negative 30 is a negative 24, isn't it? Yes. 
And let's not forget our k. And here we have just 12 plus a, don't we? Which is? Uh, 20. 20. Now, do we have any other like terms? No. We have our k terms. We have our number terms. These are not like terms. They stay separate, and it looks like there's our simplified answer. All okay, right, nicely done. Ashley, if you're still online with us because that was such a wonderful problem, we're going to send you away with a meal courtesy of our friends at Johnny Rockets in the Marketplace. So congratulations on that. When you go over, do us a favor, say hi to Lydia, see if she's there. She's a big supporter of Do the Math and kind enough to uh, provide all of the free meals for the students that uh, happen to phone in. All right, Michael, you ready to get back to work? Yes. Back to right. the board, young man. Let's take a look at another set of fractions you're going to be adding. There you go. So this one we've got three-fifths, three over five, plus one-half. Okay, so we need to think, what common multiple does two and five both go into? Mm, ten. You got it, ten. So let's go ahead and put our word denominators. Now, Michael, you go ahead and find out what our, our equivalent numerators are. Five times two and three times two equals six. Okay, yep, perfect. And two times five and one times five, so five. Okay, so now what are we going to do to solve this? Um, you add the numerators. Okay. Six plus five equals equals eleven tenths. Okay. Now, have uh, you, has your teacher taught you yes. um, improper fractions? Yes. And that's an improper fraction, right? Yes. So tell me, what do we do to get rid of that? Um, here, you could go ahead and work it down here. Eleven divided by ten. Okay. Is the, which is in the house, the numerator or the denominator? Maybe. Yeah. Let's try that one more time. There you go. Um, 11 divided by 10. There you go. And 10 goes to 11 once. Okay. Right there. Um, there you go. We're going to erase that. Okay, keep going. And 10 minus... Um, ah. Oh, you're fine. Minus um, 11... 1 minus 0 is 1, and 1 minus that is 0. And, and what we're going to actually, is this our complete whole number? That's our whole number, right? Yes. Our whole number. This is our, we're now... That's our remainder? Our, yes, which is our numerator, yes. right? And this is going to stay our... On our fraction. Yeah, our denominator. So what's, again, what's our whole number? 1. 1, so let's write it right there. And our numerator is? Is um, 1. 1. And our denominator is? 10. 10. There you go. And so actually 11 over 10 is the same as 1 and? 1 10. Woohoo! Good Nicely job. Nicely done right there. there Michael be doing a little bit of work with the improper fractions and mixed numbers. 636-4357 is the phone number. Let's go back to the phones from American Elementary. A lot of phone calls, a lot of homework from American today. Emma, how are you today? What grade are you in, Emma? Six. All right. As soon as you're ready, let's hear that math problem. Okay. Um, it's a word problem. Okay. okay. Um, Joe and Donald are having a bubble gum stretching contest to see who can stretch their bubble gum the farthest. Joe stretches his gum ten and five tenths. Inches and Donald stretches his gum ten and fifty hundred inches. So Who are stretches these, their gum the farthest? Okay, are these written in fraction or decimals? Decimals. Decimals. Okay, that's why I asked. Okay, so when you say ten and five tenths, that's ten point five, right? Yeah. All right. So what was the other number? Ten and fifty hundred. Ten and fifty hundreds. Five O hundreds? Yes. So ten and fifty hundreds? So it's written yes. as a decimal this way? Yes. So one one decimal is ten point five, ten and five tenths. And the other one is ten and fifty hundredths, ten point five O. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Now what's the question that they ask? Who stretches their gun the farthest? 
Okay, so we want to find how they're different, right? Yes. So if we want to find the difference of the two numbers, what do we use to, what operation do we use to find the difference? Do we um, add, do we subtract, do we multiply, or do, do we divide? Um, mm. So to find the difference, right? So to find the difference of the two numbers, difference means subtract, right? So difference is the oh, yeah. Yeah, answer to a subtraction problem, isn't it? So we're going to subtract. Okay, and which one do you want to put on top, which one on the bottom? Which one looks bigger? Um, 10 and 50. Yeah, 50 is, 50 is bigger than 5, so let's put the... 10 and 50 hundredths on top, mm -hmm. and let's put the 10.5, we got to line up the decimal points, don't we? Mm -hmm. On the bottom, and we're going to subtract those two numbers, aren't we? Yes. So, when we subtract, we got to make sure that we have the same number of decimal places. We don't, don't necessarily have to have the same number of digits in the whole numbers, but in the decimals, we do, don't we? So, what do we have to yes. put in this space right here so we can subtract? What goes in this space that doesn't change the number? Um, so our placeholder is? A zero. A zero. So guess what? When you subtract these two numbers, how much farther did one stretch than the other? Zero minus zero is zero. Five minus five is zero. Mm -hmm. Zero, it looks like they're the same, aren't they? The two yeah. numbers that you gave me, 10.5 and 10.50, there's no difference in how long they stretch them, is there? Yeah. That should be your answer. Kind of a trick question kind right of there a trick for some question, students, because yeah. they'll see so. the 50 hundredths and then the 5 tenths and think, oh, well, the 50 hundredths without working it out might be the bigger one. Yes. But when you actually work it out, so uh, nice problem right there it from was. Uh, Emma at American Elementary. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30, and today we found our newest ambassador for Do The Math. That is Michael from Castle. <laughs> Did you know that? You're our newest ambassador. That means that you're going to take this math shirt, and you're going to wear it to school, out to the playground, out shopping, at home. Every place you go, you're going to wear a Do The Math shirt for us. Can you do that? Yes. All right. You know, you do it as often as uh, your parents and everybody else say that you can do it. We'll watch it every once in a while. Now, you have a lot of guests here in studio. Would you like to introduce us to uh, who came to the studio with us today? Um, um, Mama, um, Daddy, um, Papa, and Mima. All right, so there you go. You got a lot of family members here with you this afternoon. Make sure you tell everybody in class about your experience here today. Was it pretty good? You had fun? Yes. All right, you know what? I'm going to have you help us out with one last thing because every day we give away a family four pack to go see the Bakersfield Condors. You're going to select out of all the kids that phoned in today the person that is going. All right, so okay. reach in there, grab one of those, and we'll find out who's going to the Condors. Um, Let's see who you pulled out there. Malaya from American Elementary, so congratulations. Uh, I think she was using the uh, decimals to round the whole numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. So congratulations, Malaya. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern County Water Agency, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and Bakersfield City School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.